Setting up your Obsidian Vault can be, to say the least, a bit daunting. There are thousands of plugins, a number of themes, and you effectively start from scratch. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through where I landed with my vault in hopes that it will save you a ton of time when building yours. So I'm gonna break this video down into three main parts. First, I'll show you the folders and major areas of my vault. Then I'll walk you through some of the templates I use and how they might be helpful to you. And lastly, I'll finish with plugins that I've found useful. And I'll have timestamps over here if you wanna jump around to one particular part if it's more interesting to you. Before we jump into all of the folders in my vault, I wanna start by mentioning that I publish my vault through GitHub Pages, and that will likely explain why I have so many folders in here. In general, the Obsidian community is pushing for having a very flat structure within your vaults, and, and I agree with that. I have a handful more folders than most because I do publish this vault online through GitHub Pages, and I use the folders as an easy way to indicate whether a group of files should be public or not. So the first folder I wanna show you is my one-on-ones folder. And this largely stems out of the fact that I find Obsidian a great writing experience. So I could write the, these somewhere else. They're not really part of my vault, but for convenience sake, I do put them in here. Um, I've garbled the text since it's private in nature, but I'll still give you an idea of what I put in here. So I name these based on who the person I'm having the one-on-one -on -one with, and then the title is just shared, and then I will put a little bullet for each date and that links it in my graph. And then I'll just have a uh, to-do item um, for each thing I wanna discuss. And as I discuss it, I will close that out. So I keep a note for each person that I have one-on-ones with in that folder. So if you're curious how I'm making it Greek all the words, that's a plugin called Garble that I'll show you later on in the video. The next up is my business folder. And this just has a s assortment of notes that I wanna keep and link to, um, but I don't really want to share with the world. Um, if I wasn't keeping a public vault, then these would just be out on the root of the vault. So you probably don't need that unless you're planning on um, doing this publicly. Um, similarly, I have my collections folder, and this just has a collection of things that I thought were interesting, um, specifically good onboarding emails, great landing pages, things that I find particularly interesting from a design aesthetic perspective, and then just cool user experience examples. Um, I don't think that Obsidian's the best place for these, but I haven't found a better place. Um, I've tried using TickTick, and that just doesn't feel right. This feels slightly more right, but still isn't great. So if I were to open up one of these, um, let's, let's do the good onboarding emails, for example. Um, I tried Reflect for a bit, and uh, Alex McCaw does a great job with his onboarding emails to keep people on track. And so I thought that was really interesting as a flow. And so I keep these in case I ever need to run a campaign like this and I can use these as inspiration. So next up is cooking. And I'll be the first to admit that my wife does majority of the cooking in our home. But, but I do cook once or twice a week. And I try to rotate out what we eat. And so oftentimes what will happen is it'll be a while between cooking a dish and then cooking that same dish again. And I found that whenever I would do that, I would forget what I learned from the previous time cooking it. And so I've just started to keep a file for the different things that I've cooked that I found challenging. Let's grab the skirt steak example. Basically, I'll create a line for each date that I cooked it. I'll leave some notes on it, what I tried, what worked, what didn't work, and what I should try to do the next time to elevate it in some way. And so I cooked skirt steak on January 13th and I had these thoughts on it. And then I then cooked it again on February 16th and turned out a little bit better. So you probably don't need this. I would argue this isn't really part of personal knowledge management, but I don't know, maybe cooking is, who knows. Next up is just the files folder. This is my attachments folder that Obsidian will put everything into. Next up is a folder for games, which you probably don't need, but I do this for three reasons. One, I have not found a great way to create a top level heading on my online digital vault to create a collection based on something like a tag. So I found it much, much easier to create folders for these things. And then if I ever wanted to display all of the games that I have opinions on, um, this would be an easy way to do it. The other reason why I do this is I have the backlog, the gaming backlog. And if I ever create a page for this, I can have it create a page within that folder. So it just makes it easier to keep that top level record correct. And then also if I ever create a file inside of this folder, I'm using the templater feature that allows you to apply a template to any new file within a folder. And so this just makes it easy to get that template applied. 
But aside from that, folder is completely unnecessary. And if you'd prefer to have a flat structure, you could. Next up is ideas. And these are just random ideas that I've had that I'm not really ready to share with the world. This folder is private. And eventually, if I feel really good about something and I'm ready to share it with the world, I'll move it out of ideas and into the root of the vault, which will make it public. And so here, let's just grab one of these. Um, so this was an idea I had um, in trying to push people to trade five minutes of social media time each day to either focus, reflect, or learn something new. And I haven't done anything material with it yet. I was thinking maybe there would be an iOS widget or something like that that could push for that. Um, but it's still in my sort of backlog of ideas, if you will. My next folder is my folder for mocks. And this is an emerging area for me. I haven't been a huge adopter of mocks, but I've slowly started to build these up. I reference these in my index, which is the root page when you go to my online vault. And a lot of these are mocks. So design is, mock, is a mock, analog versus digital tools is a mock, um, digital workflow is a mock. And so here, let's just open up one of those. And so here um, I have a template that just applies type mock and puts it into review. And then I try to reference all the key areas in there as a jumping off point within that uh, idea. And sometimes they refer to each other. So if I go to like analog versus digital tools, um, digital workflow is actually nested within the discussion around analog versus digital tools. There are probably much better YouTubers that you could look to for the philosophy around mocks. I recommend you, you check those out. Next up is my people folder, which is another folder that is not public. And it has a combination of personal people that I know that never asked to be shared online. So that's why I don't share it. And then also uh, authors of sources that I'm consuming. That way I can see if they've created multiple things that I've consumed that I find interesting and if they're a major influence on the ideas that I intake. Next up is my personal folder, which is another private folder that has um, kind notes that people have left me. Um, it's got pictures of birthday cards and things like that. Um, nice comments that I get on YouTube. Anything that might perk up my day if I'm having a bad day, but also is probably more sensitive where I don't want to share it publicly. Next up is the project folder, which is all of the ideas that I'm currently working on, um, but aren't ready to share publicly. So actually a lot of the scripts for the YouTube videos I've done are in here. And what I plan to do is to go back, revisit all of those, clean up the rough edges from the initial scripts and add in all the additional content that made it into the final video that maybe wasn't in the original script. And then I'll publish those into the digital garden. So this projects folder is kind of a holding tank. And then if there's something meaningful that comes out of it, then I'll move it to the root. Or if it's kind of throw away at that point, I could throw it away and, and no longer need it. Again, this video is actually in there. So how I use Obsidian, these are my notes for this video. And eventually I plan to post this script um, online on the digital vault with the companion video attached within it. The next folder I'll show you is the seedlings folder, but I'll, I'll show it to you briefly, but it probably makes more sense to show you my seedlings inbox. So I'm gonna go down here and I, I've got a bunch of different files here that have an underscore and I'm using that just to make those show at the top of the list so that they're always in view because they're the things I use constantly. So let's go into the seedling inbox and I'll show you what's in there. And so this is a Kanban board of a process I'm trying to instill for handling seedlings. So they'll come in as new and then at a certain point I'll review them and then hopefully they'll make their way into a mock of some kind, um, in which case they'll be done. Um, Obviously, I'd like to um, evolve them along the way, but right now seedlings kind of exist and then they don't really mature. And so I'm trying to evolve that. Let's open up one of these. So your phone is the constant enemy to achieving your goals. This is a, an idea that I've been working through. And so I've linked in here doom scrolling and the hour before work is the golden hour for productivity. That's an allusion to photography. And then um, there's a two hour window in each day where you're most productive. And so those are some themes relating to that, that I want to mature over time and I can push those forward. So this is how I do most of my seedlings. And then you can see the raw list here in the seedling inbox and I'll push those across. Next up after seedlings is my sources. And this is my uh, literary notes and highlights from Readwise. So I've got those set up to come in here. And so everything I read or highlight in Readwise goes here. Or if I'm reading a book 
or an article and I want to make manual notes, I'll throw those in here as well. So let's just grab, um, let's grab Alchemy, for example. So this was a book I read and then each of the highlights comes in here. So I'll, I'll dig into Readwise um, a little bit later in the video when we talk about plugins, but all of my notes come in here. And then if I want to like add to them, I'll put in a little note afterwards. This tag actually came in automatically, but if I left additional commentary later like this, then that'll come in here. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll link to a new seedling um, from here as well. Next up after sources is temporal. And these are all of my um, daily, weekly, and annual notes. So in general, I try to do a daily note for each day. We'll open one of those up here. And I start with what I'm grateful for, um, a daily highlight for today to focus my energy on and to reflect to see if I actually achieve that. Any notes that I thought were interesting throughout the day, and then I try to end the day with some reflection on what made me smile, what I learned, did I exercise, did I have any cool thoughts, and is there anything I could have done to make today better? And so I do those daily, and then at the end of each week, I try to also do a weekly roundup. So let's open that up. And here, what I'll do is at the start of each week, I will set some goals for the week. And then at the end of the week, I will review that progress to see how I did. So in this case, I had uh, five goals. I completed three of them and I didn't complete two of them. And I keep this in here um, for reflection. I then catalog all the accomplishments from the week, the highs, the lows, anything I learned and things I'd like to improve in the following week. For my annual notes, I go back through all of those weekly notes from throughout the year and I try to catalog the interesting experiences, places, accomplishments, things, game changers, and learnings. So let's dig into those. So um, experiences were cool things that happened throughout the year. Places were places that I visited throughout the year. Accomplishments were things that I was proud of. So things are cool gear that I amassed throughout the year that made a big difference. And then game changers are software, techniques, mindsets, that, that have made a huge difference. And then learnings are key themes the, throughout the year that also were helpful. And then lastly, the to publish folder is a folder of things that I think would be useful to the public, but I haven't yet curated or cleansed of um, private information. And so it's kind of a to-do list, if you will, for things that I should bring to the public vault. I touched briefly on the seedling inbox, but I also have a number of other sort of underscore lead files that are of significance. So I've recently moved my book backlog out of Goodreads. Um, it's still in Goodreads, but I find Goodreads to be a weird experience when trying to figure out which book to read next or what is on deck. And so I've since moved that into Obsidian just so that I can keep tabs on it. It also makes for a good experience when writing literary notes relative to the book it also reminds me to actually like review the book and finish it instead of completing reading it and then stopping there, try to push me to do that last step of um, curating my thoughts and feelings about the book. Next up is my content calendar. These are ideas for videos or articles um, that are at some point in the process of getting built, whether they just be an idea or things on deck or things that I think have some promise. Uh, writing in progress are things that I'm actively cultivating, ready for record. So let's move how I use Obsidian over to ready to record. My computer is running incredibly slow right this moment. Um, from there, needs editing, needs upload, scheduled, needs promotion, because um, YouTube does get me some viewers, but also like posting it to forums that would find it interesting also is very helpful. And then these are ones that I need to write the companion article for and then actually publish and be done. Similarly to books, I've got the gaming backlog, which are games that I either want to play, um, are currently playing, um, are playing for multiplayer, and then things that I've paused that I'd like to return to, I've put down and don't intend to come back to, or games that I consider being completed, or games that I consider being completed. We talked about ideas, that's the same thing, um, but on top of that ideas folder. The index is the homepage to the vault, so if you were to go to uh, the root of brandonkboswell.com, it would be this page. 
And this is the jumping off point that people can use to get around on, on the site. Similarly to gaming and books, we've got the music backlog. This is music that I'm currently listening to um, and what's sort of up next as far as an album to just have on in the background. Also do the same thing for TV. I had all of these in different places. Um, I specifically had them in Tick Tick and then realized that Tick Tick was not as good for that as I would like it to be. And so I've since moved it over to Obsidian. And then lastly are the writing prompts that I should write but don't. And so I've been, I've been housing a handful of writing prompts that I think are worth writing on and just need to find the time to do them. And then everything else that's in here that's at the root of the vault is all accessible online in the public version of the vault. Next up, let's dig into templates. So I've got a bunch of these, but most of these are um, derivatives of the same thing. Let's start first with the daily note. This is the daily note that gets used whenever I start a daily note for a given day. I'm grateful for my daily highlight notes and reflection. And this is using Templater, so I've got it where it will drop the cursor on that first bullet just to speed things up. And so inside of the uh, Daily Notes plugin, which I think they changed the name of it, but we'll get into that in a second, I can set which templates to use. So I've got one for daily, I've got one for weekly, and then I've got one for annual. And again, it's all driving, um, which you guys saw a little bit earlier. So we have the book note. Um, this looks really complicated, but it's it's really not. This is all around trying to make sure that each file gets a title and that that title also gets an H1 tag. If you're not presenting your content on the internet, you probably don't need that H1 tag, but the site looks a lot better when it has a consistent title. What this is saying is it's running some JavaScript and it's saying, what is the current file's title if it doesn't have a title or the title is the default untitled title, then prompt me for a new title and then await for that file to get renamed. And then once it gets renamed, then produce the rest of the template. So at that point, it'll set a creation date as the date. This is helpful for publishing and showing the when, is, when was this article first published, which was something I didn't have initially and I wanted to have that on everything that's on the vault. And so I've done this to go in and try and set that. And then I've gone back through on every note and just opened it and applied this template so that they'll all have published dates. And then lastly, I just set a type of book. Um, I'm not sure this actually works the way I want it to. For whatever reason, whenever you have a hashtag inside a front matter, um, Obsidian doesn't seem to honor it. So I'll probably rip that out at some point, but I haven't done it yet. And then. Um, it's going to put that current title as an H1 tag, and then this is the actual template that I use for books, and then it's going to drop my cursor into that first bullet so that I can start typing. If I need to go add front matter to a file that doesn't have it for some reason, I can just hit Command-T and add the front matter. Um, this is my game template. It's largely the same as the book template, but a little bit uh, more stripped down. And then the mock does the same exact thing. So like game mock, person, yeah, person's even a little bit simpler. It doesn't have anything in it. Project does the same thing, but it's got um, a couple of prompts to help me get the project kicked off right. So like, why does someone care about what I'm saying? Um, what is the title and description? Because that's often something that I forget to do. Um, and then I write in the timestamps and the description for the video. Um, seedlings is very, very similar to game and mock. The biggest difference is it has a type of seedling. And then sources will be for sources that I generate in my literary notes that don't come from Readwise. This applies a similar thing where we'll get an author and a URL. And so if I'm pre-creating something that I'm gonna write about, I will use this template. Topic works similarly, and then we already went through weekly. So those are my templates. Next up, let's talk about plugins. So command and comma will pull up our settings, and then we can jump into plugins. So the first one I use is the calendar view. You can see it over here on the right. And then I've, I've tweaked the settings a little bit because I want a spot for weekly notes. Um, here, we can go into the settings really quickly. I have week start on Monday, and then I show the week number, and I don't confirm on new notes because I don't ever need to tweak it. Um, I use the checklist. This allows me to bring all of my to-do lists from everything and show them all in one place. And I've got that up here in the top left. 
Um, here, let's see if I can show that without giving away anything too crazy. Yeah, so this is my weekly uh, goals for the week, and then here are some to-dos out of a future video. But all these show in here, and then I can collapse them if I don't wanna see them. So this is a nice way to just see my weekly to-dos um, at a glance. Uh, contextual typography adds in some additional CSS classes into your file so that the spacing between the headers um, and the body text will look better together. Um, I added this a while back. I have no idea whether it makes a difference or not, um, but somebody told me it was helpful, and so I added it. Um, cycle through panes. This is if I have multiple um, tabs up at once. I can jump between them with control tab. Um, theoretically really useful, but I often forget to use it. Um, I don't use daily activity. I use data view for um, my weekly review. So I actually missed this when I was talking about this earlier. Another part of my weekly review is looking through everything that I wrote for the week. And here we can, we can pull that up. So if I go into my content log, this is a data view file that is incredibly slow. Um, and that's probably my biggest frustration with it. Um, honestly, if you have a workflow for reviewing everything that you created in a week and can get that into tabs where you can view it, please let me know in the comments. This is something I struggle with a ton. Um, this works, but it's com incredibly slow and brings my system to a crawl. It makes my weekly review of content um, frustrating. So what this is, and I'll, I'll put this into edit mode in a second so that you can see it, but it basically brings up all the files by creation date and with month, day, year. And then what I do is for the given week, so I just did week number nine. And so what I would do here is I'd look at all the content created between the 21st and the 27th. And I basically load all these pages up, up as tabs. And then I go through and I pull out anything that was meaningful and put it into my weekly note or I'll explore the content a little bit further to add in some additional thoughts that I have after being a few days removed from it. Back to plugins. I don't use file name heading sync anymore because it conflicts with Templater, but this is a really cool plugin if you want to keep the H1 tag on your page um, in line with what the file is called. And so basically as you rename the file, it will rename the header. Um, and it's a really cool plugin for getting those um, H1 tags added. I've since gotten them added to everything. And then as I create new files, Templater does it for me. So I don't need it anymore, but this was super helpful in getting those added initially. I then have focus mode. This allows me to hit control alt command and press enter to toggle everything away. So here, let me show you that. Focus mode, press it again to unfocus mode. Pretty useful. I showed garble text a little bit earlier, but basically you can go in here and then you just hit command shift P and hit garble and it will Greek everything so that people won't see your private content. Hider lets you turn off certain aspects of the UI that you don't want. So I have everything turned off that you can turn off because I'm trying to create a great writing experience. I don't need all these bells and whistles in a lot of cases. And so the biggest thing I'm trying to do is remove distractions so that I can focus on creating good content. Um, Kanban, which I talked about at length. Um, I don't think I have anything too crazy as far as settings in here. I think everything is running default. But really cool plugin. I was skeptical of using it at first because I have really good Kanban tools in something like TickTick, but um, it's very, very handy when um, trying to do more long form content. So I also use language tool, which is basically Grammarly. Um, it's an alternative to Grammarly, which I had used Grammarly for a while and really liked it, um, but you can't get Grammarly inside of Obsidian. And so language tool, you can get inside of Obsidian. And so since I'm gonna be publishing a lot of this content online, I wanna make sure it looks like I know how to read and write in English. Um, I think I do, but some days it's better than others. Um, metadata extractor is used by um, Alfred, which I'm not using that workflow anymore. So metadata extractor and um, advanced URI, which I had at the top, I have used, but those workflows just never stuck. So I really don't need them running anymore. So I use the minimal theme. I've also tried California Coast and Notational, and they're both really great. Um, I would recommend them as well, but minimal is the one that happened to stick for me. 
um, and I really like it. So you can tweak some of the settings in here if you really want to. Um, I don't think I've got anything too crazy in here. Um, just match the whether the system's in light mode, dark mode, and custom icons. And that's really it. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I use natural language dates a ton because I'm used to using Notion and this lets you type at and then a date to get um, that date. So here, let me just ruin my content log for a second. I'm gonna say at next Thursday and then type enter and it'll give you that link to next Thursday. Super duper handy. Note refactor, this lets you highlight a, a bit of text and then right click on it and transform it into its own note and then leave a reference. Um, fairly straightforward, I do use it a bit. Um, I also have the Outliner plugin, but I've had it for so long that I don't even really remember what it does. But TLDRs, if you like the way outlining works in Notion, it'll make it work like that. Paste URL into selection is again, another Notion type thing where I've gotten used to being able to select a bit of text and then be able to paste a link into that and that lets you do that and it'll put the markdown syntax in there for you automatically. I use periodic notes for those weekly, daily, and annual notes. Um, let's look at the settings in here. So yeah, so I use templates daily for daily. Um, this all goes to the daily notes folder inside of Temporal. I've got weekly notes turned on. They use the weekly note and they go to the weekly notes folder. I don't do monthly, I don't do quarterly. I tried monthly, it didn't work for me. Um, and then I do my annual note manually. Um, that's why it's not hooked up. I should probably hook that up at some point. All right, I use Readwise, which I alluded to. This will pull in all of my Readwise um, highlights. And so those just go into the sources folder. So I don't have it sync automatically when Obsidian opens because Obsidian can be a little slow opening anyway. And if I'm opening Obsidian and it wasn't open already, I probably have something I'm trying to write about. And so I don't want to do anything that might make that any slower than it already is. It'll automatically sync every 12 hours anyway, which is usually enough for me. And then if I literally just highlighted something, I can go in and ask it to manually sync from the command shift P palette. Um, this thing, command shift P, it'll pull up and then I can say read wise sync now and it'll sync in everything. Recent files, I kind of use recent files, but uh, not all that much. I do use sliding panes though. So this is really nice if you're gonna open up a lot of files and you wanna be able to uh, scroll between them. Um, this makes that a lot easier to do. So I've used rollover daily to-dos in the past, but I don't use them now. Basically what this does is anything that you didn't complete from your previous daily note will be put at the bottom of your next daily note. Um, theoretically useful, but most of the time I do my legitimate to-dos in TickTick, not in Obsidian. Spaced repetition is potentially really cool. Um, I don't feel like I'm fully taking advantage of everything it does, but basically what you can do is you can say, uh, what's the part I use? I use it for notes. And what you can do is you put hash review inside of a note, and then you can right click on it and say whether it was easy, hard, or somewhere in between. And based on that, it will um, have that show up in your spaced repetition flashcards with a date that you should read it. And you can tell by these dates that I'm way behind. So these are all the things that I need to review that I haven't reviewed. And then these are the things that I thought were hard. So they're gonna have, they're gonna come up more frequently. And then these are the things that I thought were medium or easy. And so the idea here is that each day I'll review some of these. Um, and I'm not using it to remember things so much as I am to review things and consider things, um, explore them, um, to mature them. All right, style settings, I don't think I'm leveraging anymore. No, I could probably get rid of that. Um, tag page preview is something I had off and then I turned back on. And I use it now just on that content log page because opening a new page when that page is already up can be really slow. And so I can actually just hover over each link and if I just need to pull little pieces out of it, that gives me what I need and slow and makes it so I don't have to slow down so much. So Tag Wrangler is really useful if you use tags. I largely just use it for renaming, but um, every once in a while I'll use it for merging as well. So this has a lot of utility there. And then Templater I touched on earlier. Um, I've used both the internal templating and the Templater templating. 
I would say unless you're doing anything exotic with JavaScript or moving the cursors around, or you want things to happen automatically in certain folders, the regular out of the box templating is probably more than enough for you. Um, but if that's not the case, let me walk you through what I do here. And so what I've done, I use it out of my templates folder and then I trigger templater on new file creation. And this will make it so that if there's anything in those files, they'll get parsed out. Um, and then I have in specific folders, um, templates associated with those. So if I create a file in any of these folders, it will leverage the template for those um, folders. And so this just allows me to have some consistency and also some templating that's automatic, even if I'm not creating them through the Kanban system. So the Kanban system has it and the templater has it. And so either way, whichever workflow I go through, um, my files will have good templating. So that's a look around my Obsidian Vault. I hope it was useful to you. And let me know down in the comments if you've got some ideas on ways I can improve it. Thanks, have a great day. Hey guys, before you go, if you enjoyed the video, please tap the like button. If you didn't, then that other button works too. And you can help me out a ton by subscribing to the channel. Thanks, have a great day, peace.